नमस्ते भैया हमेशा खुश रहो भैया वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल मैं सिर्फ चेयरमैन डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस इन ज्योति विद्यापीठ कोविंस यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर in this series of the diseases of genital genital medullary system today we will be discussing about a very common disorder of the old age people that is benign prostatic hyperplasia so today what is uh, benign uh, prostatic hyperplasia that is uh, the increase in the size of the prostate gland prostate glands are commonly occurs in males and uh, as the age increases size increases that causes the constriction in the uh, flow of the urine Uh, due to which there are certain symptoms uh, with which the patient comes to us uh, that consists of difficulty in passing urine. So this is a very common condition. It is commonly encountered in almost hundred percent of the people, hundred percent of the patients uh, of the old age, especially. And uh, let's start with benign prostatic hyperplasia because modern medicine has uh, not uh, more, much scope in the field of the BPH. Uh, we have many surgical treatment and certain medications. But this this condition is very well managed by the homeopathic medicines. There are certain medicines which are uh, having a very good role that we will be going to discuss in the at the end of this lecture, which have a very good role in the cases of uh, BPH that is benign prostatic hyperplasia. All right. So let's start with BPH benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is this is the basically the uh, picture of the reproductive system. Main reproductive system that shows the peripheral zone of the prostate uh, that shows the prostate gland. It is situated just below the urinary bladder, and uh, uh, on the side of uh, the passage, the passage. Just look at another picture, which shows how how the prostate gland is situated. This is cut section, the cross section of the bladder and prostate gland. Uh, in the normal condition, the urine flow normally from the uh, bladder to the urethra, uh, to the urethra to the outside. But as the old age progresses, the, the, there is enlargement of the prostate gland. It becomes thicker and harder, due to which the passage of uh, urine becomes narrow. The passage through which the urine comes out from the bladder to the urethra to the exterior becomes narrow, and that is causes a lot of symptoms in the patient. As the weight increases, uh, you can see clearly see in this picture, the normal prostate sizes has increased. With the passage, with the uh, passage of age, as the patient becomes older and older, due to which all the symptoms uh, that we are commonly seeing, the changes are taking place in this condition. So, what is prostate? Prostate is basically a walnut-sized gland. Walnut-sized gland that is located between the bladder and the penis. So, it is a walnut, like a crow. A crow is a gland with that that is located between the bladder and the penis. The prostate is just in front of the rectum. It lies just in front of the rectum. So uh, whenever you uh, see a doctor examining from the uh, from the prostate, he always uh, does the DRE or the digital rectal examination to assess the size of the prostate, whether the prostate is enlarged or not. The the physician performs a digital rectal examination because it lies just in front of the rectum. The urethra runs through the center of the prostate. So through the center of the prostate, the urethra is running out, and Uh, from the bladder to the penis, letting the urine flow out of the body. The prostate secretes various uh, the fluid that nourishes and protects the sperm. So, prostate uh, during uh, the adulthood, during the adulthood, when uh, when the, uh, the patient is sexually very active, at that time it uh, secretes the prostate secretes the fluid that nourishes and protects the sperm. But as the age progresses, there is uh, Then the prostate becomes rudimentary, and it is uh, uh, due to which uh, there are certain changes that takes place in the prostate gland, and uh, it becomes harder and thicker, due to which uh, becomes enlarged, and the symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia is are commonly observed in the cases of patients. So normal uh, patient in the adult male is around 11 grams, and it uh, ranges between 7 to 16 grams. So the if we uh, see the weight of the uh, Prostate gland normally, the normal healthy uh, adult, it is seven to eleven to sixteen grams. But uh, in case of enlargement, this uh, this weight increases significantly, and also the volume of the prostate increases significantly. There is enlargement of prostate. This is uh, nearly universal in the aging man, as I have already told you. That as the age progresses, the, the prostate gland enlarges, right, and it becomes uh, increased in size and becomes hypertrophic. 
that is a normal phenomenon. Therefore, the leakage is observed almost in 100% of patients, uh, but more common in certain individuals in comparison to others. The symptoms are more predominant in only few in comparison to others, but the increased enlargement of the size of prostate is many found in all the cases. It begins by the age of 45 years. So by the age of 45 years, the prostate gland uh, increases. The volume of over 30 centimeter cube is regarded as prostate negative. So the volume of prostate if it gets greater than 30 meter cube, it is regarded as prostate organic. It occurs in the area of the prostate gland that is surrounding the urethra and produces urinary outflow outflow. So when the volume of the prostate increases, it causes uh, causes the obstruction to the uh, outflow of the urine that is causing the different clinical features of the uh, patient. So the patient with uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia for which the patient is coming to us. So what are the signs and symptoms uh, for which the patient is coming to us? Uh, let's discuss few of the important uh, clinical features. The first one is the obstructive symptoms. Obstructive symptom obstruction to the outflow of urine. So there will be urinary hesitancy, there will be straining, straining from urine, there will be weaker stream of urine. Okay. So uh, there will be urinary hesitancy and straining from urination. Uh, there will be weaker stream and uh, terminal dribbling means dribbling means when urine pass karne hai, uske baad mein bhi bool bool karke, uh, urine pass out to the right hand. Prolonged voiding and incomplete emptying. So because of the enlarged posture plan, there is difficulty in passing urine for the patient. He cannot pass the urine completely. There will be dribbling of urine after the passage of urine. And uh, there will be a prolonged voiding or incomplete emptying of the bladder. Despite of his complete efforts, there will be incomplete emptying of the bladder. There will be irritative symptoms. Irritative symptoms means that will be causing any irritations like urinary frequency, urgency, nocturia, urgent continence, and small boiling volumes. What are the irritating symptoms that could produce irritation to the patient like urinary frequency? Bar -bar निकल <laughs> As the post voided residual volume increases, the nocturia and outflow incontinence may happen. Just as if you have a post voided volume, you pass because of the obstruction. Complete urine is not able to pass through the urethra. This is the post volume volume. Void can be a bad volume in urine. This is the same thing. This is the same thing. This is the same thing. This and outflow incontinence with the development of the patient. So, the patient is very happy to outflow incontinence with the development of the patient. Now, for the prostate, the international prostate symptom score has that is uh, in short known as IPSS. What do you call it? International prostate symptom score. IPSS. International prostate symptom score. ये इसमें कुछ चीजें बताई गई हैं दैट इज फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज स्क्रीनिंग पेशेंट से पूछा जाता है फ्यू क्वेश्चंस आर आस्क फ्रॉम द पेशेंट एंड अकॉर्डिंगली मार्किंग्स आर गिवन एंड ऑन बेसिस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दीस मार्किंग्स इट इज असेस्ड दैट व्हाट इज द सीवियरिटी ऑफ द डिजीज फॉर दिस पेशेंट सो सो फर्स्ट इज द स्ट्रेन हाउ मच यू हैव टू स्ट्रेन फ्रॉम द सेकंड इज वीक स्ट्रेन हाउ हाउ इज द स्ट्रेन इज इट गुड फ्लो गुड स्ट्रेन और द स्ट्रेन इज वीक इंटरमिटेंसी uh, do you pass uh, regular urine or there is intermittent flow? First, the flow comes out and then it stops and then it starts again. Incomplete emptying. Fourth point is incomplete emptying. Are you able to void the urine completely or is there any incomplete emptying? Okay. Frequency of urine. How frequent uh, you are uh, able to pass the urine? So you have to ask for the frequency. Then make it in that the shop can be jacket, that's part of the piece of the other things are the thing which are to that mess up the new to pass it as much another jacket. So the frequency of urine increases in the cases of Kitna Kitna frequently a jacket. Urgency urgency means how urgent Kitna up rope pathway will and only rope pathway. As a coming in comes out to your Akujana for the medical child. Not to be a not to be this number of times per night. Kitty bar rat which are pretty. 
then the score is calculated according to this question here. Patient से question पूछे गए हैं उसके हिसाब से आपको score calculate करना है। अगर patient का score zero है, किसी तरह की कोई तकलीफ नहीं है ना उसे screen नहीं है ना उसे बार-बार जाना पड़ता है किसी तरह की कोई दिक्कत नहीं है। zero score अगर है, तो he is not having any symptom of BPH, benign prostate hypertension. If the score is less than one, then in five, then if the score is one and uh, it means that less than one time five if the score is two less than half the time if the score is three then half the time if the score is four more than half the time and five almost always is a problem that we have is the bad matter now the two scores hang out in my class name he not at all simple name with that is because you can fight this game and you check out there they say that they need questions there स्ट्रेनिंग है वीक स्ट्रीम है इंटरमीडेंसी हेजिटेंसी इनको आप पूछते हो पर हर सिम्टम को जीरो से फाइव के स्केल में आप मेजर करो उसमें बताओ आप कितना आपका स्केल है जीरो टू फाइव तक जैसे स्ट्रेनिंग है तो जीरो टू फाइव में बताओ वीक स्ट्रीम है तो जीरो टू फाइव में बताओ इंटरमीडेंसी है तो जीरो टू फाइव में बताओ इनकम्प्लीट एक्टिंग है तो जीरो टू फाइव में बताओ इनकम्सी है तो जीरो टू फाइव में बताओ इमरजेंसी है तो जीरो टू फाइव में बताओ या फिर तो जीरो टू फाइव में बताओ तो उसके बेसिस पे हम लोग टोटल करते हैं तो अगर जीरो टू सेवन आपका स्कोर आ रहा है टोटल दैट मीन्स यू हैव वेरी माइल्ड सिम्टम्स एट टू नाइनटीन अगर है दैट मीन्स यू हैव मॉडरेट सिम्टम्स एंड स्कोर इज कमिंग ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फाइव दैट मीन्स यू हैव सीरियस सिम्टम्स ऑफ एक और होता है क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ स्कोर हमारे पास में जिसमें कि यूरनरी सिम्टम्स के बेसिस पे आप बताते हैं कि अगर जीरो स्कोर आपका है तो दैट मीन्स यू आर डिलाइटेड वेरी गुड इफ द स्कोर इज वन देन यू आर प्लीज इफ टू सेटिस्फाइड इफ थ्री नेक्स्ट अगर फोर पहुंच जाता है स्कोर देन यू आर डिसटिस्फाइड फाइव अगर हो गया तो यू आर वेरी अनहैप्पी एंड सिक्स अगर हो गया तो प्लीज यू आर वेरी मच टेरिफाइड व्हाट आर द वेरियस इन्वेस्टिगेशंस इन्वेस्टिगेशंस दैट कैन बी परफॉर्म इन केसेस ऑफ बीपीएच कौन कौन से आप टेस्ट करा सकते हैं बीपीएच के केस में आईपीएसएस स्कोर जो हमने अभी देखा है केसेस स्कोर के बेसिस पे आप जज कर सकते हो कि पेशेंट कंडीशन कैसी है देन सेकंड इज यूरो फोरमेट्री यूरो फोरमेट्री कराई जाती है जिससे कि आपको यूरो का फ्लो पता चल पाए इंटरमीडेंसी का फ्लो कैसा है सीधा है या उल्टा जा रहा है कैसा फ्लो है जिससे ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन का आपको आइडिया अच्छा है डीआरई डिजिटल रेक्टल एग्जामिनेशन जैसे कि मैंने आपको बताया है हमने डिस्कस किया रेक्टल लाइज जस्ट अबव द रेक्टल लाइज जस्ट अबव द रेक्टल सो इट कैन बी असेस्ड बाय डूइंग डिजिटल रेक्टल एग्जामिनेशन अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी में आपको रेक्टल एंड एब्डोमिनल अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी आप करा सकते हैं एंड एमआरआई कैन बी डन फॉर द सिस्टम दैट Created in that sort of the prostate. Now, what is the management? There is uh, medical management. If, if the prostate is less than 40 centimeter cube, then alpha adrenal septal blockers are put there. But if the 40 centimeter cube is more, then the prostate size is very little, high alpha adrenal centers. For the non-surgical cases, uh, we have a transurethral microwave thermotherapy, a device that uh, sends computer regulatory microwaves through the catheter to treat and destroy excess of prostate. Non-surgical. Now, sur surgical. What are the different surgical measures that are usually done in cases of prostate uh, uh, EDH? That is transurethral dissection of prostate. That is known as TURP. Laser therapy, laser surgery by radium laser uh, inoculation. Uh, there is TIRP, uh, TUIP. That is transurethral incision of prostate. Tra transurethral dissection is separate. Transurethral uh, dissection is separate and incision is separate. Both are different therapies. Urolift system treatment that fibers the urethra by placing any implant that holds enlarged prostate tissue out of it. So we are putting an implant in the way where there is narrowness present. It can be open surgery and uh, it can be open surgery. It is not routinely done nowadays. It goes to an elevator. And prostate artery embolization can be done, which can uh, which means the embolization of the uh, uh, of the prostatic artery so that the prostate can become uh, atrophied uh, due to the lack of blood supply. And homeopathy. Uh, since I have told in the very beginning that homeopathy plays a very important role in the treatment of PH, it uh, provides a very good relief to the symptoms, uh, the patient symptoms, and uh, some of the medicines provide a very, very, these are very effective in treating cases of PH. Uh, so some of the medicines include number one, sabalzerilata. This is this is the golden remedy for the cases of benign uh, prostate hyperplasia. This prescribed uh, blindly for the cases of PH. Uh, and it provides a wonderful, wonderful results. So they said it especially in mother creatures. When you make it, the glands are stony hard. And there is, it's again with uh, when the patient is associated with the symptoms of uh, the urinary tract infection. 
it can be either status or uh, so status. Sarsaparilla is uh, again a very good medicine like sodium, then the very complaints are associated with uh, gastric complaints. So right a cup again for old age remedy uh, with enlargement of gland, so the status is. This is Clematis erecta, not Clematis, this is Clematis. Clematis erecta is a very good medicine for again uh, uh, symptoms and Chima Kinda Amuleta, again, very good uh, medicine for the glandular enlargement. Which oxidantin is a great antipsychotic medicine. Uh, it is uh, very greatly prescribed, very readily prescribed in the cases of glandular enlargement for psychotic diagnosis. Another very important medicine is that is not written here is Ferantakrika. Is given in free expectancy, uh, graduation form, and uh, that also provides a very good result in cases of uh, So, this was all about BPH. In the next topic, that will be for the last topic of your uh, genetic system, we will be discussing about the carcinoma of the genetic system. We will be discussing two types of carcinomas, and that will be for the last topic of the uh, genetic system that we are going to discuss. So, and the session was powered by digital version 2.0 to the theater. I hope you are satisfied with my digital session. If you have any query, please mention it in the comment box. I'll try to solve it. Thank you very much. Uh, so I hope uh, the things are clear to you. Uh, there might be a little problem with the right place score. So you can ask me again when the college opens, then I can again try to do these things. If you don't understand it, anything is missing. Due to shortage of time, I cannot cover each and everything in this uh, video lecture. So, just go through your books, uh, take a reading of all these topics, and uh, if you don't understand, you might ask me. So, thank you very much. Uh, this was uh, Dr. Ravi Chen signing off for now. Uh, we will meet in the next topic tomorrow.